we, Joe Spade would give us two acres of land down in front of her. It was two acres down in front of her house. And we, uh, he went out in, she let him have the timber. Go out in the woods and cut the timber down, you know, the trees down and take them to the mill and have them sawed up. And they made uh, enough lumber to build our first house out of old, un, uh, un, the, uh, the lumber hadn't been smoothed out, in other words, it's just rough lumber. And he built our first house out of that. And he built it himself. And we went out to Hugo's. He, that's about the only place he did take me, it seemed like, was to Hugo's. He, and he liked to go out there every Sunday and uh, and spend the day and eat dinner with them and everything. Like that. And he got always cooked big meals and everything. Uh, so he liked to go out there and eat dinner with them. And, uh, he would, we, one, one, one Saturday we went out there and we was on our way back and somebody called us. Somebody stopped us, I think Shorty Miller, stopped us and said, ain't no need to rush it back, Mr. Miles, your house had done burned down to the ground. Everything had burned up. We had to start over right from scratch. I mean, we didn't have nothing. We wasn't nobody there, so there was nobody, nothing saved. And, uh, he started, we had to start up from scratch, and the next time he built this house, he built, of course he had borrowed money from the bank, we didn't have no money. <laughs> no one saved to do nothing like that, so he had to borrow, always borrowed money from the bank. And uh, we always had a mortgage and all against that. And uh, he built, him and Hugo built this big house. I mean, it was a big one. And the living room and, and dining room was, as big as this kitchen and the living room, yeah. this kitchen, this living room and the kitchen, and everything combined. And I remember the kids was, <laughs> it had a hardwood floor, and the kids would learn how to skate all around that. It was so big, it was like a, a skating rink. It was so big. And uh, one night, I knew you would woke me up. And as I run it, run it. I think it used our car. He had a brand new Pontiac car. And it was in our in our garage, and uh, the horn was blowing, and the dogs were barking, and uh, Jimmy was Jimmy Johnson was living across the street with Joe and Joe Flint house, and he heard those dogs barking and sent, and the horn blowing, and he looked over there, and our whole house was on fire. The uh, house, the whole round, uh, the whole garage had started, started on fire. The fire started in the garage, and uh, it set the whole front part of the house on fire. And he, he ran he run over there to wake TV up. And uh, he pounded on the window and said, Mr. Miles, Mr. Miles, your house is on fire. So TV woke me up and he said, Honey, said, don't get scared, but <laughs> said the house is on fire. I'm gonna I'm gonna kick the window out and let you and Sherry put you and Sherry out. Sherry was a little bit baby. And he got wrapped her up in a blanket and put her like that. Let me get out the window and he was handed her out the window from my and then he said, I'm, and I'm going to go up down the hall and wake the boys up. All the boys are living, but down the hall in the back bedrooms. Yeah. So <laughs> he been putting me out. And I was standing there shaking like a dog. I, said, <laughs> I was in shock, I'm sure. I, you know, I, didn't, I couldn't control my shaking. And uh, we went over to Joe's place, and we had lived third there for. I guess about three or four months on TV. Get, uh, he, he bought another piece of land from her, another acre, you know, where, where Rest House is now, you know, where that house is. And he started, he said, I'm too old to start, have to start over again. He said, he, he said, I, I just don't see how I can start over again, but he did. And he built it. And, uh, you gotta go in. <laughs> Uh, and we lived in there. Then we lived in that house till, till he died. And uh, right when uh, Harry got sick, you know, he got polyidosis and then he got uh, sick and I had to go into the hospital. He, uh, he was living with me at that time. And he uh, he woke up me up one Sunday morning and said, Mama, my stomach's on fire. I won't have to go to the, doc, the hospital. Said to call, call Rap and tell him to call 911. So I did. 
and he rat down one one come caught him. And first he got that had to go in there and take a bath because he he knew he, he didn't smell good. His, girl, his girlfriend done told me to tell him that he didn't smell good. He need to take a bath. But he said, I can't take a bath. My hurt, it hurts my feet to get in that tub. Go away, get over in the tub. But he did take a bath because he knew he was fixing to go in the hospital. And uh, when he got in the hospital, they asked him what kind of drugs he was on. And he said, all kind of drugs, legal and illegal. He said, well, I, had, I had to know because I'm going to have to put you to sleep because you your penis is fixing to rupture and you might have your penis stuck out. So they went in there and I guess they took his penis out and sewed him back up. And the first seven weeks he was in the, in the hospital. And the, Dr. Wilson said, Hey, I, there's something wrong. You're not healing up like you're supposed to. So he went back in there and said, I'm going to have to do an expiratory operation and see what's wrong why you're not healing up. And he did, and he found dark, dark spots on Harry's intestines, and Harry gangrene sitting in on his intestines. And he said, I'm gonna have to take most of your intestines out, Harry. Harry's asleep, because he didn't tell me, him that told me that. So I said, well, do whatever you have to do. So he did, he said, he cut most of Harry's intestines out, washed him out about three gallons of water. Sold him back up and he started healing up then. But as soon as he got well enough to leave, Dr. Wilson told him, Harry, you're not going to be able to go home. You're going to have to go into those folks' home. Your mama can't take care of you no more. I had got gout in my feet and I couldn't even walk on my feet. I, I, told my, I dropped a, a little old telephone director on my little, middle toe and it, it made my that, that foot swell up and I couldn't even stand up on my foot at all. So he said, he said, why didn't somebody tell me I wasn't going to be able to go home? And Rick laughed over and said, well, you, you couldn't, I couldn't nobody tell you that, Harry. You couldn't understand it. And he said, give me some kind of drug. I, want, I don't want to go home. I don't want to go home. I don't want to go to the person. But uh, Ralph told him, said, well, you're going to have to anyway, Harry. You don't understand why now, but you... And he told me later that he hated that nursing home. He said, I wish they'd send me to Pine Bluff somewhere. And I said, Harry, you don't hate this nursing home. It's just, you hate uh, the fact that you're not in control of your own body anymore. That's what you hate, not, not the nursing home. The nursing home is just a by symptom. It's not, not what's causing you to hate it. It's the fact that you don't have any control over your own body. He said, I guess you're right there. But he said, I'm, I'm not living there, I'm just existing. And uh, I, I, I didn't, had to move out of my house and I'd moved to, to Hamburg so I could stay with him, go visit him every day in the there's no. I moved in Miss Chapman, Sherry's husband's grandmother's house. Her house, she, his grandmother died and left her house empty and everything she had was still there. All her silverware, her dishes and everything. I could have moved, just, just moved myself my clothes in there, but I didn't. I moved everything I had over there. And uh, I thought I was going to just live there from now on, you know. But then Sherry, she she moved to, her, her and Robert was breaking up and I didn't know it, you know. I didn't know they were supposed to get a divorce. She hadn't told me nothing about it until she started going on how Saturday she'd go to Monroe. And she'd been coming by and getting me and taking me to go buy groceries and everything on Saturdays. So she quit doing that. So I knew there was something wrong. And then she told me, said, Mama, Robert and I are fixing to get a divorce and I'm fixing to move to Monroe. So I said, well, what am I supposed to do next? Uh, Sherry, and she said, I don't know, no, I guess you have to do whatever you want to do. You can stay here if you want to. Robert don't mind if you stay in here, you know. He said you could live here the rest of your life if you want to. And it, I didn't have to pay in rent or anything. The house was just standing there empty, you know, and it's, everything was just like his grandmother left. And, uh, and uh, had the heat and the gas and everything. 
electricity and everything was running. Water, gas, had water. Water was from my park, but it's running water, it's like city water. So I, I, said, I stayed a little while longer, and then and John told me that Ms. Barnett's house was sitting there empty, hole, where they lived. And then Ms. Barnett was in the nursing home then. So he said, Mom, if you want to, you can move in over here to Ms. Barnett's house and live there for the rest of your life that you want to. I said, well, I believe I will. I'd be closer to them, you know, where I could see, go visit them. They could go and visit me. So I moved over there to Miss Barnett's. And uh, then I uh, stayed there for a while. Miss Barnett got out of the nursing She got well in the nursing home. Got out and comes, was living with me you know, for a little while. And uh, uh, she got feeling like she wanted to move to Mom said it'd be Eddie, you know, her, Eddie was her son. And uh, she said, thought she'd rather live with him, so she moved up there to move, live with him. And I, I stayed on there, I guess I, I stayed there about 20 years. You know, you moved up there, you one time down there with me, and I lived there for a while. And uh, then uh, you know, Betty and them kept, Betty and them kept saying that his barn was going to declare bankruptcy on that house, you know, and everything, and that they was going to tear it down. So uh, Nancy asked me if I wanted to move up here with her. And uh, she said, Mom, ain't you lonesome living here by yourself? And I said, yeah, but I, I, I got everything I need to be happy. I, I'm contented here. But she said, wouldn't you rather move up there and live with me instead of being, living by yourself? I said, I guess so. I, you know, I didn't didn't really want to, but I didn't, no reason, I couldn't see no reason why not. I said, I haven't got anything really to hold me here, you know, it's, it's my way to do some. So she asked me to move up here, and I did. So I've been up here since. And by then, you know, Harry done died, and done buried him and everything. And she said, you need to do something to get away from here so you can quit grieving over here. And I said, well, I ain't gonna quit grieving over him. I just, I, I quite try, try to quit thinking about it, but I said, it, it hurts me when I think about having to do something. He wasn't but four or three years old. But I said, I don't blame myself. I, but I, in a way, I feel guilty because we couldn't get him off of drugs, you know. He went me and John Hoover had gone down to my room and everything, with him go through all them courses and everything, trying to get him off of drugs. And we thought he was off of drugs. And I couldn't tell when he was on drugs and when he wasn't on drugs until I see him, see him in his room sitting one time, sitting there with a needle in his arm, sitting there sound asleep with a needle in his arm. And I said, it, it broke my heart to see my kid just chewing up, just to get all high like that. Couldn't read, he didn't want to preserve his own life that way. But I guess, they, you know, if them drugs don't get the whole of you don't, don't have no control over it. They got the control, you have it. And he done lost control of his life. Uh, tell me about the kids growing up. What were they like? Like my dad and Uncle Ronnie and all Oh, that's... <clears throat> John, John was one of the ones, the uh, only one that was different. He was always going around. It seemed to be like he was driving something, you know. And I always had that noise going with him, with his big loud. <laughs> like he was driving a car. And Raph and, Raph and, and Harry and Ronnie and all of them be playing ball or something like that. And John wouldn't, he'd be, he'd be out there playing with us, going around. <laughs> and that's all, just what I do about it. But I said, I, I couldn't take it, him saying, I was bashing old man. I said, I ain't never bashed old man. I said, I loved that old man all of his life. And uh, he made him dream about him today, him today tonight, and every time I go to sleep. You know. And I told Rev I dreamed about his idiot, and he said, I do too. Mom said, it's just like he's still here in my dreams. I said, well, he is still here in spirit. His spirit's still here. His body's gone, but his spirit's still there. 
A dog is a pig. What kind of, what, what did they used to do as kids? I mean, did they hunt a lot or what? Oh yeah, they hunted a lot. Uh, uh, they didn't go deer hunting, but they did. They had to go deer hunting every year, you know. Every time it comes deer season, they'd go deer hunting. And uh, I, 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 they killed deer back in every, every year, sometimes two deer. And they'd get, you know, half of them and, and the rat, the, the, He belonged to a, a club out there, you know, and the club would get half of it. And uh, we always had plenty of deer meat and everything. You know, had it had plenty to eat and plenty to put in the freezer, even, you know. So we always had plenty of meat of some kind. We didn't have. He used to have some pigs on the range too, you know. He he could go out and, and had a, had his own mark, and he could go out and kill a pig every once in a while. So we could have pork, all the fresh pork we wanted. <laughs> and the boys liked to go, they liked to go fishing and everything, but then, most of the time he'd go fishing with his, his, his brother, you know, you go. And one time I got on to him about it, I said, you need to take your son, start taking them fishing instead of going with your brother all the time. I said, you're robbing them of something that they, they need to know. No, to go fishing with their own daddy. And he finally started taking them, but they'd done better then. Done started getting, you know, had their own friends, and they liked to, like to go to their friends instead of going with them. He realized he had waited too late to, to start. But they liked to coon hunt and stuff like that, and he started going over and trying to coon hunt with them. They had some old mules they'd get on ride. He said, I'm having trouble getting on them old mules. <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know where I can go coon hunting with them not. <laughs> but he'd, he'd go over and try anyway. He'd like to try to, he'd try to get close to them, you know, even though he done, done kind of sort of way late, you know, to start. Kids have lots of boyfriends and girlfriends, or? Uh, they had to, you know, John got interested in Diane. When he's, I guess, just, just, just out, almost out of, by the time he got out of school. And uh, she wasn't all that old either. She was about the same age he was. And uh, I guess she, she was the only girl, girl that he ever dated. I don't believe he ever dated anybody else. Now, Ronnie, he was, he was always the ladies' man, you know. He said to it all the way. <laughs> I mean, him, him no love. Uh, uh, I can't think what his name is right now. Got in a fight over a girl one night. <laughs> oh, Dad, John got in a fight too with another, about a girl. He said, I didn't I didn't know what the boy was beating me up on. He <coughs> said, the two girls <coughs> was sitting in the car and said, I was just standing at the door talking to the girl, and old Bubba Gilmore just come up there and said, John, you, what you mess with my girl for? And jerk, jerk John down, or knocked him down, and, and got on him with a broken bottle and was trying to beat it, whoop him with a bottle, you know, cut him with a bottle. And uh, David David Johnson and uh, Brad pulled, pulled Bubba off and get up John so he wouldn't cut him. John said, I didn't know what to get, what he was fighting me for. I wasn't doing nothing. I, I had no, I didn't have no idea the girl was his girl. I was just standing there talking to them girls. I wasn't paying no attention to him. <laughs> but it, that's the only time I ever remember him getting in trouble with anybody, you know. Just that, that boy trying to fight him because he, he thought he was messing with his girl. <laughs> What about Dad? How was he with the girl? Oh my God, your daddy was, the girls run after him. I mean, they chased him. <laughs> he, they'd come to the house to get him to go with them. And I, I Rav would go run back in the back room and say, Mom, tell him I'm not at home. I don't want to go out with that girl. <laughs> he, was, he was a ladies' man and he didn't want to be a ladies' man. <laughs> It really was kind of shy. He didn't want to be. He didn't want a girl chasing after him. 
but he, he was so good looking. He, I think girls couldn't have a chance after him. I told him, I said, well, my God, instead of running hide from him, go with him, Dad. They'll, they'll probably get, show you a good time. <laughs> or you can show them a good time. So. But he was kind of shy. And he finally got interested in old Tina, Tina Evans. And she was, she wasn't quite, quite as old as he was, but she, she liked to run around with her a friend, go out bicycling on, on Sunday with her friends, single friends. And uh, I guess that that was probably what broke them up. I don't really know what broke them up. Tell you know, they they was married and they didn't stay married too long. Till she just kept running around with her single friends and wasn't long till right after that got interested in your mother and, and somehow they wound up getting a divorce and he married your mother. I never did know what really broke them up. Tina said, I remember Tina was, she tried to be really friendly with me and she was, at that time she wasn't, I was I was smoking and she she wasn't smoking but she she liked to smoke but she'd come smoke with me and she said, if Ralph asked me what well, when I smell like cigarettes, I'm going to tell you because I've been, been around you and your, your cigarette smoke gets off on me. I said, uh, I don't think you can pull that on, Ralph. Ralph ain't that dumb. <laughs> I, said, I said, I wish you wouldn't do it. I mean, you wouldn't use me that way. I don't like you doing that. that way. But uh, Tina was kind of funny that way anyway. One time she she had to go to the washer to wash clothes. and She asked me to go with her. And I, I didn't take no money with me. I, I usually didn't have any money. But I, I sometimes had a little bit of money in, in my change purse, but I didn't take it with me. And I asked her to buy me a coat. She bought herself a coat and some fingers, and I asked her to buy me a coat and some fingers. She said, no, I'm not going to do it. You can buy it with your own money. I said, well, I hadn't got no money with me. And she didn't buy it. She wouldn't buy me a coat and peanuts. And I told her, well, I'm not, next time I'm not coming up here with you. you I'd go with her to wash the tea because she didn't like to go by herself. And I just go up, I didn't have to go get the wash the tea to wash my clothes, I had to wash them in. She didn't dry at home and I'd do it my own in the, my own home. But after that I told her, I said, I'm going to tell her what you, what you did the way you acted. I told her about it, I don't know where he said if he said anything to do or not, I didn't ask him. I just didn't go with her to wash tear no more. <laughs> I was doing her a favor and she act, didn't act like I was doing her no favor. <laughs> I didn't have to go to the wash tear to get my clothes washed. I had a washing machine made at home. So did you ever have you ever drove a car before? Or? No. I had never drove I T V started teaching me how to drive one time and we had a blow out and uh and it was, I, I put my foot on the gas and stood on the brakes and we went bounce, bouncing across the cornfield and it bumped my head on the top of the thing and uh after that I said I ain't gonna learn how to drive but I got narcolepsy I figured out if I drive start driving I would go to sleep at the wheel and I might kill myself and somebody else too so I decided not to do that I just never have done oh, I had a you know, I, I inherited that truck. He, he had the 1979 Ford pickup, Bronco truck. And I inherited that. I could learn how to drive that. I wished I had it now. I, I missed out on a lot of things because I didn't know how to drive. And then I bought, I, I sold that, brought, brought uh, that uh, Ron Ron brand up here. That was Nancy's hood for me. Let him bring it up here to sell it for me because it was causing trouble between me and Sherry. Sherry was still at home then, and uh, she was driving it, and she's the only one that could drive it. I didn't, I couldn't drive it. And uh, she she wanted to go up and move in with her boyfriend and take my truck and live up, up, up town and leave me sitting out there in the country without any way to go or anything. And I wouldn't let her do that. I said, no, it's my truck, and you're not gonna do that. And uh, so I, I got Harry to a, Catch it one day at the News Observer. We just went by there and I said, I want to take, I want to get this truck today and take it to Little Rock. 
and sell it. It's causing trouble between me and Sherry, and I'm not going to put up with it. So I did, and uh, he, he he went and got it for me. And he, he drove it up here to Little Rock and uh, got grown on sell it. And uh, Nancy, Sherry, Sherry would move back home then. She, she was having trouble with her boyfriend. Her boyfriend was on drugs. His brother was on drugs. And she had moved in with him. And uh, he'd go off to El Raider or someplace and leave her on weekends by herself. And she got tired of it. She said, Mom, can I move back in with you? And I said, yeah. If you move, want to move back in with me, all you got to do is just respect the fact that I have rights just like you do. And I said, I said I'm, I'm a, no longer married, and, and I, I have a right to have boyfriends just the same as you do. And if, if you respect that, and I, like I respect you having your friends, then we can live together. But if we can't, if you don't, well, we can't. So she said she could, so we, she moved back in with me. And uh, she was working at How she went to work at Howard Brothers. They, uh, they had a Howard Brothers out there in West Crossing. And uh, she didn't have no way to get to work, so I, I, I told her, I, said, I, I, I believe we can buy you some kind of car so you can have a place to go to work. So we went to her, her, her daddy-in-law's. Uh, Mr. Chapman and bought a, 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 let me see, it was a, I don't remember what the name of this car was, but anyway, it cost $1,800. <laughs> and uh, I give him the $18. Mr. Chapman put it up to his nose, but <laughs> he, he, he had to have it doing her that way. And, and Robert had to have it doing her. He'd sniff up, every, sniff everything. You had him money, and he, he'd sniff it to so see what it smelled like. <laughs> and he, he always did his wife that way too. He'd sniff her every morning to see if she smelled good. And and, and Robert did share that same way. I said, what in the world are you doing? Does she do either that for it? Nancy said, Sherry said, I don't know why he does that because he's seen his daddy do it. I said, yeah. <laughs> I thought I thought Sharon was happy as a broken road, but you know her and Robert had been unmarried for, and had two children. You know, had Jonathan and, and Daniel McDaniel, and I thought they was happy as a broken road. And I had no idea. Then you know, she was trying to get thinking about getting a divorce. I wouldn't never moved over there to Miss Chatton if I'd not, You know what I'm The reason I moved over there is because I had to get Jonathan or somebody to take me to visit Harry every day. I didn't drive, so I didn't have no way to go visit Harry and let somebody take me. And he'd, uh, he had to go to school, so he'd have to wait till after school every day to take me to visit Harry. <laughs> what are some of the most uh, historical periods in time there that you can remember? I, oh, I don't know. I've seen a lot of things. A lot of good ones and a lot of bad ones, but I've had a pretty good life, I guess. I can't think of too many things that I'd do over again. You know, I ain't doing a different from what I'm already doing. <laughs> what age were you during, like, uh, the Great Depression? I was born in 1927. I was born just before, just before the Depression. You know, the Depression was in 1929. I was born in 1927, <laughs> so I was born just before the Depression, and of course I, I was too little to remember the Depression too much. <clears throat> Who was president when you were born? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know <laughs> things like that. President Roosevelt, I guess. I'm not sure. <laughs> Or Kennedy, I, I I remember, you know, it, we had several presidents since I, let me see, the president was Roosevelt, Kennedy, and uh, uh, Bill, Bill Clinton, and uh, both Bushes, yeah, Bush, Reagan, and uh, what about that peanut thorn, what's his name? 
Had Ronald Reagan when I was born. Yeah, Ronald Reagan's another one too that I, I forgot to mention. But this this one was a peanut farmer. He lived in Georgia and he was a peanut farmer. Uh, I can't think what his name is. And she said she didn't like him. I said, I, I always liked him. He said, I'm a good president. And, and Nancy said she so don't like Bill Clinton, but I said, I'll. I, I didn't particularly like the way he acted while he was in office, but he was a good president. He, he, Arkansas was doing good under him. You know, our economy was doing real good under him. What he, what he, in, he did in office, in the Oval Office, had nothing to do with it, and I, anything to do with him not being a good president. It was just his morals didn't seem to be too high, and uh, he liked kinky sex, and his wife undoubtedly knew he liked that. Thank you, say. And she forgave him for it. So why shouldn't we forgive him for things like that? I said, it wasn't none of my business. We anyway about the state party. But I, uh, most other people have done the same thing. On the thing. They didn't get caught with that. That little guy was trying to get his job done. The reason he got a job. He was trying to take his job away from him. He said she didn't like him because she thought he was evil. <laughs> I said, well, I don't think he's evil. I think he's, he was a, he's a man who got caught into a situation and didn't know how to get out of it. <laughs> you know, without, and it shouldn't happen then there in, the, in an office like that, you know, where it could be caught red-handed. But I said other presidents had done the same thing, one thing, they just didn't have nobody at their job. And they didn't, it wasn't publicized. A lot of the other presidents had done the same thing. What a... And I, and I said, we're not, not supposed to judge people anyway. The God tells us not to judge people because if we do judge people, they're going to judge us. And that, we're not supposed to judge other people. Oh, God's going to judge us. He's the only God. Only one we need to judge us. So was it the uh, service there that took TV out to California? Or? Uh huh. Yeah, he he was in the service. He got out of he got out of got his uh, what do you call it out in San Diego, and then he he went up to Firestone and got a job right, right away. He was he he did. He was in the audience in, in the service, and he did wheel line. You know, he he went to Aberdeen, Maryland twice and took a, a two courses in a wheel line for, for jeeps and trucks and different things like that. We the line 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 the wheels, you know, make them where they work right, <laughs> where they work right on the road, you know, with the you know not the one one side. Lower than other, that's what makes him lot more bumpy. So he got a good job in Firestone whenever he got out of the service, because he darted ahead in courses. Did he always work in TV repair in Carl Center? Yeah. When he first come back here, he, he met Harry Bond and. Uh, Harry Bunn wanted him to go to work for him. And he he took a correspondent course in television. So he didn't he didn't go to go to school but he did take a correspondent course, you know, which that's going to school by mail. And learned how to repair televisions and how to build a television and everything. And that was in nineteen forty forty seven, I believe. Or maybe it's about 1948 or 49, somewhere along that way. I, I wrote a story about I wrote a story about my life. And I gave it to Sherry. She was going to 
it typed up for me, but somehow she, she got too busy, you know, she's a school teacher. <laughs> and uh, she never did get it done. She gave it back to me, and I don't know what I've done with it. I lost it somewhere along the way. I think I had a pretty, pretty exciting life in my younger days. <laughs> I, I, I got my fill of traveling, I'll tell you that. I didn't, I didn't want to travel anymore once I started. And you know, my Nancy and I went to New York one time. We went to New Jersey and, and Harry and Jeannie, Harry Bond, uh, not Harry Bond, but Harry. Uh, what's Harry's last name, Nancy? Furstenberg. Furstenberg. And uh, Jeannie, that was John Hoover's daughter, uh, T.B.'s brother's daughter. Took us on to New York twice. We went to New York twice. And Nancy went up in the, the what do you call it, the Statue of Liberty. She climbed up the stairs and went up inside the Statue of Liberty. I couldn't, I couldn't climb the stairs, but I just I did go inside the Statue of Liberty. Look at all the pictures, you know, they got pictures of all the armies and different things that happened. Every war has happened. Huh? It's all on film, you know, it's in big pictures on the wall, you know. Sort of like a movie is. It shows pictures of things that happened in the past, like the wars, of each one of the wars. And things like that. So it's kind of interesting. That, you know, that's over at the Alice Island. And, and uh, seen where the, where the people that come in from other foreign countries comes into Ellis Island, you know, to come into this country and become citizens. We went there, and then we went up to the. Can't uh, think of what station it is now. Big big station in the New York. Uh, Grand Central Station, I guess you call it. <laughs> and we walked, and John Hoover went with us. And we, we walked in all these places, because you can't, you can't, you can't drive there. You have to, whenever you go into to New, York, New York, you have to leave your car about 20 miles outside New York, and you have to go in by train. You have to get the train go in. And if you get, if you can get a taxi, you can get a taxi and go over to New York, but we couldn't get a taxi, so we, we just walked where we went. Oh, my leg got so tired and I hurt so bad, I told him, I said, if you don't find me a place to sit down, I'm going to <laughs> sit down right in the middle of the sidewalk. <laughs> and of course, the, the people are so thick that you had to have to stir them in order to move them out of the way so you could get through. <laughs> there were so many people there, absolutely, you couldn't hardly make, make a move of that. Squeezing through. <laughs> I said, Nancy, your legs hurt so bad if you don't find me a place to sit down, I'll sit down right here in the highway, in the, right on, on the sidewalk. <laughs> she said, You better not, somebody will walk all over you. <laughs> but we finally found a little old cafe and she went in and sat down, and got us some cold rain and some, something to eat, <laughs> and rested a little bit. <laughs> I wanted to go see the Big Apple, but I then got too tired. I couldn't go that far. So you said you had a pretty exciting life when you were young there. What did what all did you do when you were young? That's so exciting. That's best about all. <laughs> I didn't do, do anything all that exciting. You know, I never have done very, very much exciting. Uh, I remember when Daddy died, when TB died, you know, he bought me a stereo. And uh, I didn't, I'd never been by myself before. I didn't know how to act when I was left by myself. Cause, you know, I, 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 I ran away from home and and went not very long until TB and I got married and then and then we started having children and I'd always had children, the children around and everything. When he died, all the children done married, moved away and I was left by myself. I didn't know what to do. I'd never been to the grocery store and just could decide what what 
doesn't matter like to eat. What, what do I like to eat? You know, I always thought, what do I want to cook for my family, you know? And all of a sudden, I, I have to decide what I, I, what do I want to eat, what I want to fix for myself. And I just didn't know how to do that. I had to start right from scratch and learn how to do everything for myself. Because TV had never allowed me to go buy groceries. I always wanted to do it yourself. I thought at first it was me that didn't want to go. But I thought when I first, we first got married, you know, I was kind of be with Sherry, with Nancy. You know, and I, I thought, and he was working first on, he just, he, he called me and asked me what I needed from the store. And he just stopped by the store and get the groceries and bring them home so I could fix whatever we were going to have for supper, you know. And uh, I thought it was me that didn't want to go to the grocery store. I didn't know it was him wanting to keep me from going to the grocery store. He wanted to do the shopping himself. And uh, I, I, I let him get away with that till we was living over in, in uh, where Ralph's living right now. And uh, Tina and, and uh, Diane, and, or Tina and Ralph and uh, Diane and John was living down there below us on that two acres, you know. That, was right in front of Josephine's house. And uh, they'd go shopping on Wednesday and, and get double stamps, you know. And they'd, you know, take those stamps and buy things for the house, their house. And TV would, he, he would take, do the shopping and he would buy, get the stamp books and he wanted to get fishing reels and rods and reels and things for himself. You know, he didn't want to get things for the house. So I told him, I said, I want to go store shopping with Diane and John on Wednesday. I mean, Diane and Tina on Wednesday. So I can get the stamps, so I can get things for our house. And he said, well, I've always gone down to shopping, and I'm going to still do that. And I said, well, I don't think that's fair. I said, I want to be, I want to be treated like other women. I'm, I'm, I want to be treated like other women. And, do the shopping product. I said, don't don't you feel kind of silly going up there? And you see, other other, other women are shopping, and their husband may be following around, what behind, you know, with them, but not, not doing the shopping. Because women are supposed to buy the food that's it's cooked in the house, because she knows what she has to cook, likes to cook, and what she she's gonna cook. I said, how would you like? I go out there and, you're to, and tell you in, the, in your television shop and tell you what kind of tubes you need to get. And, I, I wouldn't know what kind of TV you need to get, and you don't know what kind of food I want to cook either. So I want to go, I want to do, go do this shopping. But he he let me he let me a time or two, and then he made a remark that I, all I wanted to buy was toilet paper and and, and, and face soap. I said, well, that, that's the things that he wouldn't buy whenever he was going to the shop. He wanted me to make out a grocery list, and if I'd buy it. I'd had to put something in there that he didn't want to buy. He'd, he'd just say they didn't have it, and they wouldn't buy it. I said, I want, to, I want to go buy the things that I need, I think we need. And I said, those are the things that he would not buy. And he didn't think we need them. I said, I think we need them as bad as we need food to put it on the table. Anyway, we, he, said, he still said he was going to do the shopping. I, I, was sort of, I was sort of like Ralph. I didn't like the rock and boat, so I just let him go ahead and do it. And then one time he, he decided he was going to sell that two acres of land down there that, that Joseph and, and Abel had given us, you know, when we first moved back here from San Diego. And uh, I said, well, my name is on that deed just the same as yours is. If you're going to sell it, I want my half of it. Whatever you get out of it, I want half of it. He said, well, I, I asked him how much he asked him for, and he said $8,000. I said, okay, four thousand dollars out of mine is mine. I, I decided I'd go stand up for my rights. I said, if you don't stand up for your rights, you ain't gonna have none. I, I decided I'm gonna have my rights. And he, after after he got after he got that money, he said, what do you, what do you need four thousand dollars for? And I said, I don't know, but I'll think of something. <laughs> I couldn't think of anything not eating, you know, really, <laughs> that I wanted to buy. But uh, he said. He went and bought me that stereo. He bought me that stereo and some cassettes, you know, things like that. And uh, he bought Sherry a sewing machine. And uh, I guess that's what 
I, he thought that was all he, he needed to do was find me that stuff. Yeah. But I said, I still want my $4,000. But he didn't, he didn't give it to me. He wouldn't give it to me. But he, he died before he got to spend it, so I still got the $4,000. I thank God, I say, God, it was just God. <laughs> and I believe he was just God. And I believe he, he, he knows when somebody's being treated fair and when I'm being treated unfair. And it's, somehow it, 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 it works out where it's to their advantage. It did mine anyway.